The human eye can only see 24 frames per second. Obviously, seeing as the fact that content and media is played at 24 frames per second, and you're generally watching movies at that, and it's not like you've noticed any issues with smoothness, when do you ever care about that? Actually, if you really want to be pedantic about it, motion starts seeming fluid when you play pictures side by side at like 10 frames per second, you start to perceive that motion as motion instead of as individual pictures. So why would we need 60 hertz, let alone 240 hertz? Okay, I'm just kidding. Of course, I'm just kidding. Um, I made up this little chart, right? And <laughs> I know uh, some people think that I've, I've heard some things like that. Uh, generally, though, you'll hear people actually saying that the difference between 60 hertz and anything else is so minimal and silly that you don't need to do anything higher than that. Um, and for a long time there, people who used consoles would argue that, you know, 30 hertz does everything you could ever need. And why would you even need 60 hertz? Of course, opinions are changing. Technology has gotten stronger, and people's expectations for what their technology should be able to do has gone up. And now we actually have a broader range of people. More people are able to actually see the difference because, you know, they've been in the presence of it. I actually really do not think that many people under the age of 70 <laughs> look at high refresh rate screens and cannot tell any difference between it and a 60 hertz screen. Of course, there are people who just, you know, haven't used computers enough in general or just aren't technologically savvy to any degree and just don't care. And that's perfectly reasonable. But I believe if you like just point out just a little bit of what to look for, because generally these people don't care and that's why they can't see it because they just, they're not looking for it at all. And it's not something that impacts them at all. But if it is something that impacts you, you're going to notice it very well. And if you just gesture, like look at, you know, the smoothness of this moving, when you move it yourself, how fluid is it? And they're going to be able to tell most of most people between a 60 Hertz and a 240 Hertz monitor, you're going to be able to feel it. Now, does it even matter is really the question for a lot of people probably not but for the people in like a gaming niche maybe it does and we're gonna get into that hey guys if you enjoy the video please consider subscribing and hitting that like button and commenting your thoughts down below it really helps out the channel I know uh, people love it when uh, the creators comment you know bug them about all this but I've noticed that I maybe it would help so I thought I'd give it a shot thank you for checking out the channel and I hope you have a great day uh, now back to the video first look at this handy dandy chart I wrote oh you can see it nice and pretty right there we're gonna start all the way up at the top at 24 Hertz this is used for content this is used for like I'm currently recording at 30 but a lot of people record like movies you watch a lot of videos a lot of animations are done in 24 frames per second because it's where things just start to look natural. It, it looks natural. And with, you know, natural motion blur and all that that occurs during filming and, and, you know, any animation techniques we use, it just looks right. But when we're talking gaming, it there's a different story to be told. Uh, a fun fact, really quick, I'm not sure how many people know this, but up at the top, right above 24 hertz, I have OOT. Fun fact, Ocarina of Time on the N64 ran at like 20 frames per second, and in the PAL version, I believe it ran at 15 or something crazy low like that. Uh, and I remember playing that game quite a bit when I was a kid and having zero issues. I even played it somewhat recently. And the big thing I've noticed with that in specific is that the game is tailored to that experience. It knows what it is and it knows what it's doing. It understands the hardware it's on and it's not trying to be a crazy Twitch shooter while, <laughs> while running at 20 frames per second. And that's the real thing here. Now, let's continue. 30 hertz is the next one there after 24 hertz. 30 hertz is half of 60. That's pretty much it. Uh, in North America, you're going to be using a lot of monitors, TVs. We're all basically set to 60 
hertz. And so a lot of things ran at 30 because it was half of that. It was a nice close number, similar to the 24 that's used for a lot of content. And so it just made sense. A lot of consoles targeted 30 for a long time for their AAA games because it provides a decent balance between your input and the visual smoothness while also not being just dreadful and hard to run. So it just, it just, it worked. It did the job. It's not great. It was very common at the time. A lot of co uh, back in the day, I guess. I want to say back in the day. It's far less common now. Um, it's very rare that you're actually seeing a console, like a, a modern console, apart from, you know, Series S and Switch 2, that is targeting uh, 30 frames per second in latest releases because it just, it's fallen out of favor as 60 hertz has become more uh, widely adopted. Uh, the next one we're going to get to, though, is 40 hertz. You notice I have that 30 to 60 right there because that's like the general pipeline. You're generally going from 30 hertz to 60 hertz. 40 is actually relatively recent in its sort of widespread adoption, and that's because variable refresh rate monitors have become more common. Variable refresh rate screens in general have become, you know, for the longest time I had never even heard of these when I was a kid, but they're just, they're more common now, and so you'll be able to, to use this mode when, you know, also having a 60 hertz mode elsewhere. And 40 hertz provides a significant uplift in response time and smoothness while also not totally breaking the bank when it comes to performance uh, load needed in order to reach it. So that's nice. It's a nice in-between. It's a, it, You can kind of think of it as halfway between 30 and 60 in feel, which is an interesting way to think about it. It's about halfway between 30 and 60 when it comes to the response time. And that's a pretty recent thing. That that really, the, the only time I actually use that is in handhelds. That's the only time I'm actually using 40 hertz. Uh, I use it on my Steam Deck a lot. And uh, on the Switch too, there's some things that run at 40 hertz. Specifically, Cyberpunk runs at 40 hertz, I believe. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. 60 hertz is the standard now. I feel like that's the new normal. That's that's generally what everything's targeting and then allowing for modes that can go up to 120 hertz in specific titles. On PC, you're going to be targeting at least 60. Generally is what you're going to be looking at is at least 60 in the games you want to play. This is if you're not necessarily targeting super competitive gaming. This provides a nice, like everything feels smooth. Everything's smooth, everything's nice, everything's clean, the response time is pretty darn good, a significant, and I'm talking significant increase from 30 frames per second when it comes to the input response. It's about 16 milliseconds of input latency between when the computer registers the input and begins drawing the frame and when that frame is completed and outputted to the monitor. And so it's about 16 milliseconds. You're still going to feel it. Um, generally, your brain's going to tune it out if you're used to 60 hertz. So it'll just feel completely normal, completely natural if that's just what you use for you know, any given amount of time. So for the longest time, this is what I use, of course. Of course. I feel like almost everybody has used 60 hertz for the majority of their life and has switched over somewhat recently. For me, I might actually be hitting a point somewhat sooner than I would imagine at, in which I have been using more than 60 hertz for the majority of my life, which is fun. Yeah, 60 hertz. Normal. Very normal. Use it. It's sick. It does everything. Very common on TVs. Not so common in monitors anymore, which is interesting. If you go on Amazon, I dare you. I dare you. Go on Amazon right now, especially if you're in North America. I don't know what it looks like in other places. Sorry about that. But look at Amazon right now and look at 1080p 24-inch screens or whatever, 20, 1080p monitors, and try your hardest to find a 60 hertz Brand new 60 hertz 1080p monitor panel. It is hard. It is very hard. Like nobody's selling this anymore because it is so cheap and it is so easy. I feel like a lot of monitors, they're just overclocked up to something higher than 60 hertz. 60 hertz panels can be overclocked. You don't even need 60 hertz anymore. It's like a totally useless number to, to produce anymore because all of our 1080p screens are able to be pushed higher than 60 hertz. <laughs> So 60 hertz in 1080p panels is just falling by the wayside. Um, however, in, in 1080p panels on TVs, and 1080p panels and TVs isn't really a modern thing anymore. I don't think. I've maybe 
It is, but almost all TVs, I swear, are trying to push for 4K now. But I don't I don't really know. I I don't know. TVs not my area of forte. However, the next ground up in in what I, I, this is subjective, I guess. But generally like 90 hertz is when you start to reach like a real milestone past 60. I mean 80 is very like ugh, that feels like a milestone too. But 90 is like just that 30 fps more just feels like that's it. New milestone, especially coming for, if you're talking 30 to 60, 60 to 90. The difference between 30 uh, or 60 and 90 is less than the difference between 30 and 60. That difference, uh, and this, and again, 90 is super smooth uh, in comparison to 60. It is much better input times. Everything's closer together, and it's really nice. But then what you, you really reach right here is 120. 120 is nice. This is when you reach high refresh rate. Real quick. We're going to take a little break and, and see, like, I've been talking all theory. I've been talking all out my mouth, you know? You know, I haven't been actually showing anything. What's up with that? So we're going to actually take a little quick gander here. This is a video from I'm Ned. Only has 186 subscribers, and yet this video has 819,000 views. So people are using this guy's, you know, I'm going to subscribe because why not? And like the video, sure. Um, this is just a little demonstration. It's only in 720p. The resolution doesn't really matter as much as the uh, framer here. It's all in slow motion. And what we're going to be looking for is the amount of time that each image is on the screen before painting a new picture. Um, and this is just a quick comparison. Of course, because this is slowed down, this isn't actually going to actually show you the difference you need to have a higher refresh rate screen with you in order to actually see the difference for yourself um but real quick just for like for the people who are following along who don't exactly understand what refresh rate really impacts this is basically what it is go so we, let's go ahead and play this so this is starting at 240 hertz it's really smooth um this is slowed down a lot I, it doesn't give an exact number this is 144 you notice how when it's drawing a new picture, it's a little bit more jittery, right? Because it's skipping. And this one is 60 hertz. You can also see, this is another effect real quick that you can actually see really nice in this video, um, is ghosting. You see this trail right here? That's due to the fact that the pixels, the actual pixels themselves, aren't able to fully update before, uh, like fully change to their new thing before it paints the, the the next picture so it's still trying to adjust the final value by the time the next frame is occurring and this results in the last frame kind of retaining some of the in motion features um, which will result in this ghosting this is something that OLED uh, diminishes quite a lot just by how fast it can uh, update which is kind of crazy this is more of an LCD artifact but yeah, right, right here, what you see, yeah, is, is that, that difference in clear view in this side-by-side. -side. You have right here where it's it's more jittery, and here where it's it's like completely smooth. Now, after 120 hertz is when you really reach a weird area in which everything past that is pretty much just a 120 hertz panel that's been overclocked, up to a certain point, of course. Um, everything between like 120, like... It's, it's interesting, you're going to notice gains going from a 122, or excuse me, a 120 to a 165. You're not going to notice as many improvements going from 120 to 144. The difference between 100 and 144 is noticeable, at least to me. Uh, 144 to 165, practically nothing. 165 to 180, also practically nothing, although it's, it is somewhat noticeable. The first real insane uplift that I saw after 120 was 240 hertz, which is another doubling. It's like going from 30 to 60 or 60 to 120 just again. So that's when you reach a point where you're probably not going to notice much better going to something higher refresh rate unless you are insane with games. Even many people would also also just argue that 240 is completely not really necessary for anybody, uh, because 120 is already so fast that it's it's not really gonna matter for most people. Again, look at look at the difference between the 144 here, right there, and the 240. Of course, the 240 is smoother, 
right? And a little clearer because of the panel. But really, this is slowed down as well. But in most people, you're not really losing much information. Like, this is split seconds, right? You're not losing a ton of information going going from 240 to 144. And this is why so many people, it's just, it's not worth it for most people. However, for me, I just love the smoothness. And it was just, it, it's definitely one of the things that's been the most worth it, uh, switching to a uh, newer monitor. Uh, I went from 144 to 240, and it's been really nice. But honestly, here's where it really com- what it really comes down to. For almost everybody, almost everybody, 60 hertz is plenty. But for gamers, people who are playing games, you generally want, you know, a little bit higher. 60 will do everything if you're not playing, like, fast-paced games. You don't really need all that extra. But 120 is when you reach, like, the peak of what people, like, may need. You're generally not going to want to be playing esports titles at 60 hertz. 120 is when you reach a point where that's like the best, the most you need in order to be very, very good at something. The most you need in order to not be limiting yourself to any real degree. 60 hertz can be limiting in a competitive setting. And I don't don't know if many people will agree with me, but I feel like that's a pretty reasonable take. You can get really good with 60 hertz. Don't let, like, if you're like just starting a game, don't like go out and buy a 120 hertz monitor because your 60 hertz is keeping you down. Probably isn't. But. In order to reach, like, somewhat peak performance, 120 is going to be basically the minimum you need in order to get, like, to the best of the best. You're not really going to be seeing as many improvements past that except for an ease of tracking and clarity. Clarity is the big thing here. Uh, Our eyes don't really respond to information that, that fast. The big thing of what it does is improve clarity to our eyes. Even if it doesn't necessarily look all that much smoother to us, I mean, it looks smoother, of course. We see the smoothness difference. It's going to look sharper just due to the fact that we don't have to, like, interpret a little skip with our eye tracking. It'll just look smoother to our eyes, which is nice. It really does work. 240 is really nice, and 240 is the highest refresh rate, refresh rate I have ever seen. Anything past that, I have no clue. I have no clue if it's going to get much better from here. People have said, I remember like a year ago or a year or two ago when a, the first 500 hertz monitor came out. People were reviewing that. I think it was it was Optimum or I think that's his name, Optimum. He reviewed it and he said it was like looking through a window. I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds so cool. And after switching to 240, I mean, it's obvious it's still like if I move a mouse around at 240, you do notice the gap in between the the mouse cursors. If you're on a on a thing, you go and you notice the little gap. That's generally how I look to just straight up see to see the frame the refresh rate of something. You can do that, wiggle it around, and see the gaps in between the cursors, and you get a feel for it. Uh, feeling the difference require you can also do with the mouse, but uh, honestly, it's easier to see for me than to feel, which is interesting, which is one of the reasons why I like uh, frame gen so much. Anyway, uh, that was a bit beside the point, but honestly, looking through a window sounds sick, so maybe that'll be something interesting to look into later. Definitely not a, on the radar at all now. <laughs> like at all that is definitely by the wayside for now but it's it sounds really cool and if you're a really high uh competitive gamer <laughs> whatever that really means today uh get a window get a window and that sounds pretty cool <laughs> it does so anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh thank you for tuning in and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.